Hi, I'm Peyton Dale and I am your friendly neighborhood wardrobe stylist. Welcome to The Peyton Project. On this show, I'm going to give you all of my tips and my tricks that I've learned over years and years of styling. I'm going to take you behind the scenes with me as I style people's music videos and photo shoots and for every day. And we're also going to be talking to a lot of my personal friends about what makes them tick when it comes to getting dressed in the morning. Hey guys, welcome back to The Peyton Project. On this episode, we're gonna talk about sustainability, but not in the way that you think. Most people think sustainable and they think, oh, eco-friendly or clothes made of hemp, let's be honest. And that's not something that I'm into. And I also wanna kind of give you the tools to shop smarter. And I wanna give you the tools to save your money in the long run. So for me, when I hear sustainable wardrobe, I don't think of super green stuff necessarily. In my world, buying new clothes every single season is kind of expected. And we're seeing this a lot in the whole mom jean versus skinny jean TikTok debate. And what I really want to encourage people to do is to figure out what their home base is, figure out their personal style, which really comes from knowing who you are as a person on the inside and then dressing like that, which I can't help you with that. That's a therapist that you're gonna need. But I wanna help you figure out what that is and how to dress that for every single occasion. So you're only buying things that you're going to love and you're only buying things a few times as opposed to buying a bunch of crap that you don't even really like that much. So I have my friend Crystal Douglas here with me again and we're going to talk about the different versions of sustainability and how to really hone in on your forever closet because we're all adults here and we should be purchasing things that are going to be lasting us several years as opposed to three weeks. So thanks so much for being back. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. I want to know what, because your version of sustainability is let's have as little waste as possible. Let's right. buy things a few times, only a few times. So when you're yeah. looking for sustainable clothing for your wardrobe, what do you do? Walk me through what that looks like for you. Oh man. Okay. So but after you text me and ask me if you need something. Yeah. I, I ask you exactly what I'm going to need. <laughs> um, okay. So fashion is the second, second biggest polluter in the world. Um, next to the emissions by like maritime and, and car transportation. So when we look at buying clothes, I want to buy as little as possible and I want to buy pieces that don't um, shrink in the wash no matter whether you follow the care instructions or not. Or I want to buy things that have really finished seams on the inside and the top stitching is completely immaculate because I know that they actually took time making that garment. Um, or like the, the snaps or the buttons on things are high quality um, and, and little stuff like that when I'm looking at a garment in store and I'm trying to pick it out. If I see that the buttons are just sewn on like really quickly and I know that they're about to fall off, the rest of the garment was usually made the same way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so for, for me, sustainability is, is buying less items um, and also items that I personally know were not made with excessive waste. For instance, when we're making small batch products at, at my brick and mortar. Um, Music City Sewing, go follow yeah. them on Instagram. Put the <laughs> um, little logo down here. <laughs> and like when we're making stuff, we try to do it as zero waste or as low waste as possible. So for us on the cutting room floor, whenever you're cutting out, you could even be cutting out an X small size t-shirt, but you're still gonna have two yards of fabric that you're using. So you're gonna end up with scraps. So when we make things, we're making it as sustainably and ethically as possible. So the girls are all working in a well-lit, clean, beautiful, gorgeous, big workspace and they're being paid fairly. And when we, when we position pattern pieces on the fabric, we're conserving as much space as possible. However, the caveat is when major, like mass manufacturers are making things, the way that they're conserving fabric is not how you wanna buy clothes. Like the sleeve pattern is turned sideways compared to everything else so that they can fit one last little piece into that scrap of fabric, which results in a shirt that- Or the pattern is off. Where yes. it's like a plaid and the plaid <laughs> starts here and then it's back, it's down here. For some reason the plaid is shifted on the sleeve. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> so that garment is not gonna wear evenly. It's not gonna wash evenly. It's not gonna dry evenly. It's not going to age evenly. Um, so when I think of making things, I'm making them from the standpoint where the garment itself is going to age evenly. And it's going to last. It's going to last. So exactly. it's not going to fall apart after a few washes. Exactly. So we're investing time in certain stages of that production. 
Um, so when I'm buying things, I'm looking at, does the grain line go the same way across the entire garment? Because I know that there was more thought and care put into manufacturing that garment. Or, Which means it will last longer than... Exactly. Um, or I'm looking at the care instructions because if it's an item where the care instructions don't fit my lifestyle, I just need to hold off. Because <laughs> dry clean only. It's, it's not going to We don't happen. have time for that. Exactly. They do make at-home dry cleaning, though. So I am a fan of the dry L. I wish they'd sponsor me. We love dry L. We love dry L. She's great. So much. She's my favorite. <laughs> For me too, I really think uh, a part of my sustainable lifestyle is my aesthetic that I lean towards anyway kind of goes towards vintage in general. Yeah. And I think that we did a segment on vintage clothing and I think a lot of people find that they go into a vintage store and it's all polyester and it's all super costumey. Mm. But for me, like this is vintage, this is vintage. Um, these are both things that were, the t-shirt cost more than I'd like to say, but, the, okay. but the jacket was like 20 bucks. And it's a well-constructed black velvet jacket, right. which is something that I'm going to be able to wear for the rest of my life if I take care of it. It's timeless. It's timeless. It's mm. going to be something that will, I can wear this with jeans, I can wear this with a, a suit, I can do so many different things with it. And fashion is on a 20 year cycle. So that's mm -hmm. why we're seeing the 90s come back again. I really want to encourage some of my younger viewers to go and dig through their mom's closet and see your moms have the original mom jeans. There's no need to go out and buy more of them. They were just called jeans. They were just called jeans back then, <laughs> but they have them. So I really want to encourage people to look at the clothes that are already here as opposed to just going to the store and buying all new stuff. One, they're gonna last longer. Yeah. And two, they're gonna be something that not everybody else has. Right. And three, you're not contributing to the bigger issue. I love clothes and I think that a lot of people hear sustainable or a uh, capsule and they go, oh, it's gonna be all black and white and it's gonna be so boring and I'm yeah. gonna look like I'm in a cult because it's all baggy and oversized. Why, <laughs> why are all sustainable clothing brands like potato sacks? Why I've is never it all oversized it. and boxy? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. But I think yeah. that a lot of people hear that and they immediately go, I like color. I like texture and pattern. Right. Well, I do too. I just have, you know, when we moved into the house we're currently in, I went from having a room as my closet to mm -hmm. a wardrobe built into the wall because it's a charming little old house. We looked at this house and I went, I can't live here. <laughs> this, is, this house is so cute. No, mm -mm, closet's not happening. But I got my wardrobe down to 30 pieces. Right. And that includes a lot of vintage, it includes a lot of print, a lot of texture, and a lot of color. And I think that if people kind of get out of there, like sustainable is boring, sustainable is You know bland. why? That's because so many brands have greenwashed themselves and branded themselves as sustainable that the general consumer assumes that that's what sustainability looks like. Or it's incredibly expensive. That's what right. a lot of people think too. But that's where it comes to repairing and not replacing an item and shopping vintage and only buying pieces that you a thousand percent love. Right. Like I always tell people, if it takes you longer than 10 seconds to decide whether you like it, you shouldn't be buying it in the first place. If it's a heck no. If it's, it, what is it that you say? If, if it's, it's not, not a, a heck, heck yes, yes, then it's, it's a, a heck, heck no. no. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times we don't think in uh, in the context of our existing closets, we just go, oh, I like this, I like that. We talked about outfit recipes on one of the last episodes yeah. where it's like going to the grocery store hungry. Mm -hmm. You're like, why do I have eight kinds of potato chips right. and no food? And it was like me shopping in the past where it's like I have five leopard jackets, eight fur coats, mm -hmm. and nothing to wear. Yeah. And now I have three of each. But I have stuff to wear them with because I've thought about this. And that's a sustainable closet. It's sustainable for me. Right. In my closet, leopard is a neutral. In someone else's <laughs> closet, leopard is going to be scary. But if it's something I'll wear on a regular basis multiple ways, that's my version of sustainability. Yes. So I like to buy vintage. I like to buy only a few times. Like I, I want to buy, I have a black blazer and a gray blazer and a purple blazer because purple is also a neutral in my right. world. Those are, I'm set and a leopard one. For me shopping, I invest in my shoes because I make most of my clothes. So I yeah. splurge on shoes and that's how I become more sustainable and I'll, I'll repair things that are falling apart or I'll take the pattern off of what I had before and I'll recreate a new garment out of a better fabric. And yeah. then that way I permanently have that shirt forever. This is why I have you because I can't do that. Go, I liked this. Can you make it again? I make all of her husband's Senleys. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So. As far as repair, not replace, what are some things that we need to look for? Do we need, I know that you said the stitching and the quality yeah. of the fabric, make sure all the grain goes the same way. Mm -hmm. Are there certain fabrics that we should just avoid altogether buying new? 
it's changed so much in the last few years. Um, not necessarily, to be honest, uh, there's a lot of really, really brilliant, great new fabrics out there like Lyocells and, and other things that are very, very sustainable. Um, if you actually want to lean into sustainability, stay away from bamboo because the majority uh, interesting bamboo brands are marketed and I will die on this hill. Bamboo brands. Get are, on that hill. Yes. Get on it. Bamboo brands are marketed as this green thing when in reality, what bamboo has to go through to become a garment has to be tons of chemical treatments. Mm. The bamboo that's being pulled to make these t-shirts and these sheets and all of these things is older rainforest bamboo. Okay, so you're destroying old rainforest. It's not farmed bamboo. For your green sheets. For your green sheets, and then it has to go through so many different treatments to become a soft enough fiber. It's not a soft textile. So lean away from that, lean into 100% cottons, organic cottons. Um, there's so many, like honestly, there's sustainable polyesters because there's nothing happening to the environment. Um, as far as That's silk, what Stella McCartney does. Yeah. As far as silk goes, you have to be careful with silk. Uh, honestly, because the silkworms can only produce once before they die. They, yeah. They die. yeah. So, so um, Silk's one I avoid and people don't understand why I avoid it. Why. Yeah. And I just go, I don't like that worms have to die for a cami. Yeah. It just, and it seems weird. It's kind of yeah. like when you fit. So like when, vintage because silk lasts forever. It just, it's like when I figured out what honey was, I'm like, wait. Oh. <laughs> Ew. Still wear silk, still eat honey, but uh, right. I'm a terrible vegan. But, but just becoming a little bit more aware of where yes. your textiles come from and how they're made, you know? And I also want to touch on something that a lot of style people don't touch on, and it's that fast fashion, it gets kind of uh, villainized a lot. And yeah. in some instances, when I talk about this on my TikTok, there are fashion deserts where people don't have any access to uh, mm. thrift stores or don't have any access to... Uh, modern hip clothing. It's kind of like a food desert, but mm -hmm. for clothing. So imagine if you were like in a town where you're a size 18 and nobody else is, and you lean a little mm. more goth, yeah. you got nothing. Right. So fast fashion can be a really easy thing for people to go to. So yeah. I don't want to villainize it because also it is also the only plus size places that a lot of people can get stuff from. But if you buy them and you take care of these pieces and you wear them forever, and then you also can supplement with some Poshmark or Thread Up or yeah. Depop or any of those things. I really just want to, I'm never gonna be perfect in this because I love clothing and I like to buy it, but I can make smarter choices. And I yeah. think that's what I want everybody to do is I'm not telling you to just throw out everything that you own. I just really want you to be a little bit more intentional when yeah. it comes to this. I think intentional is the right word. Intentional and, and, and two, even if you don't have a ton of shopping options, when you're looking at that size 18 dress, go through every size 18 dress on the rack and ex like look through the quality of the buttonholes, the stitching at the seams, the armpits. Look through every single stitch and pull it apart and see if it's unraveling or see if it's staying together and buy the best size 18 on the rack because they're not all made by the same person. They're not all made by the same machine and machines have quirks. So choose the best that you can choose on the rack where you're at. Yep. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. I could talk to you all day long and I probably will after we're done here. But um, yeah, guys, just be more intentional when it comes to what you're purchasing, what you're putting on your body. And um, yeah, have a great day.